first Sunday, there we go, this first Sunday in January and the Sunday of Epiphany. And so we will celebrate Epiphany and also the Lord's Supper at the end of the service. We have an open communion table and we invite you to come and share the bread and the cup. Any announcements that you'd like to make that's not in our, our bulletin, first of all? I have a, a couple of things I need to to address uh, that are not printed. Okay. Uh, it's because Floyd's not here. You'd blame it on him if he was there. <laughs> This Wednesday. Okay. And that's Fair Grove's uh, hot dog supper to support their um, food pantry. Yeah. Anything else up with the choir? Or? New Year's resolution of joining the choir. There you go. I think that's an excellent idea. What about the poinsettias? Any word on this? Okay. All right. Yeah, we will, we will be taking those out this morning. So if, if you, if you had purchased a poinsettia and you want it, come and get it. If, if not, but you know of someone that would enjoy a gift of a poinsettia, please come up here and, and get one of those. Any other announcements? I did tell you that communion is today and also the fifth Sunday night sing will be January the 12th at six o'clock. Jackson was not able to have, uh, the fifth Sunday night sing. It was their turn to host. But they had some, they had a conflict, and so uh, we will have that January the 12th at six o'clock with refreshments to follow. So um, please make a mental note of that. And then the United Methodist, yeah, the United Methodist Men's Meeting will be at um, Libby Hill in Reedsville, January the 14th at 6:30. Today is bittersweet. Many of you probably have, have learned of uh, Elmo's passing uh, Saturday morning early, about 2 o'clock. Uh, he went to be with his Lord and Savior. And um, it, it kind of leaves a, a hole in the, in the church family, a hole in the community, a hole in, in his family. Uh, he was uh, an admired man, a faithful man. And uh, reflecting back on, on Elmo, I, I just I, I had admired him so much because he just was an even-tempered, very giving, faithful man. And so uh, we want to remember him and his family this morning. And I remind you that the services will be um, here at the church, both visitation and the funeral. We will have visitation here in the sanctuary tomorrow from four to seven. Um, the funeral home is supplying personnel to help people park and to, to organize things. Um, we'll also have light refreshments in the fellowship hall uh, we're asking the um, the members of the church, if you will, provide some light refreshments uh, over there, just in case we have a, a huge crowd, which we kind of expect. Uh, we can we can offer that during this time. Then the the funeral service itself will be at, be at 11 a.m. here at the church. Uh, following that, we will go to Lakeview Cemetery on Highway 29 for the committal. Um, no refreshments afterwards. The family would like to go back to to Elmo's home and. And gather there if you would like to, to join them after the committal service. They certainly welcome you. And they thank you for the, the overwhelming response, the calls and the cards and the visits and, and all of that. Since uh, Elmo had his, um, had his uh, incident, um, he's been uh, sick for, I guess, about a month now um, since uh, suffering a, a, a bleed in his brain. But, you know, through the whole thing and, and talking to Elmo, I never heard him complain one time. Now, he would tell you if, if he, he felt a little, you know, out of sorts or if, if he had a headache. But as far as complaining about where he was or his circumstances, never heard a thing. And then um, when he went to the emergency room at Annie Penn, um, I was back there in the ER room with him. And, and he said, I'm tired and I'm ready to go home. And he did. And so we celebrate that and, and uh, thank Jesus for his love and for his forgiveness and unsacrificial and sacrificial love and unconditional love, and and uh, we rejoice over where he has gone, but we will certainly miss him. The other thing that I want to address um, is the recent news from the United Methodist Church concerning um, a proposal that has been put together by 
uh, top level officials within the United Methodist Church. Um, some of the news organizations got it wrong. Uh, they made it seem like this has already happened, that the split has occurred, and, and that is far from the truth. This is what we really anticipated through all of the, the talks that's been going on. Um, a year or so ago, a committee was formed called The Way Forward to address the issue of the LBGTQ community and, and the issues surrounding that. At the last conference, it was voted down and, and affirmed that, that the United Methodist Church will continue to have a traditional view of scripture as far as it addresses those issues. Um, the, the big four-year conference is coming up the first week in May. And the first week in May is when many proposals will be offered. This is just one of many that will be submitted and voted on. Um, it's not a surprise that, that um, you know, a, a, a proposal was made. Uh, we should, I, I guess, um, find ourselves fortunate that, that even in, contained within that proposal is the funds to support both sides of the issue. Uh, if, if, this is, if this is to pass, the proposal would, would make for a, a traditional view, churches with a traditional view of Scripture and churches with a what they call a progressive view of Scripture, um, still under the umbrella of the United Methodist Church. Funds are being set aside, or proposed funds set aside to support both issues. So we're watching it closely. This church will, will have meetings uh, when, it, when it becomes necessary to discuss uh, our stance and, and what we want to do as far as that is concerned. Um, I'm, I'm keeping up with the news that's coming out of the, the district office and the, uh, and the conference. And uh, we will wait and see what happens that first week in May, see how that issue is addressed. And, and then we will go from there. So what right now does it change on the local level? What does it mean to us? Absolutely nothing. We still preach the gospel. We still go out into the world and, and invite people into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and we accept all people. And we want all people to come to a, a saving knowledge of, of Jesus Christ. And so just wanted to say that because it's hit the news pretty hard. I even saw on CNN, it made it sound like it had already happened. And, and you know, it's, it's chaos. And, and really, that's not the truth. That, that was just one proposal of many that will be uh, voted on the first week in May. Any questions on that before we start our worship service? Again, it'll have nothing um, to do with us yet. And when it does, we will certainly meet and, and discuss those issues. Any other announcements? Let us turn our hearts to the Lord. And remember the sacrifice that Jesus made so that we can have life. John 1010 says, I have come to give them life and give it more abundantly than they could imagine. are able to stand this morning as we affirm our, as we have our spoken call to worship this morning. And please stand with me. Still having some technical issues with our projection, so if you'll turn in your bulletin to the call of worship. Lord, this year we will follow the star of Bethlehem. We went south following movie stars and greed and lust. We went east following stars of militarism, nationalism, and war. We even went north following our own visions, our own intuition, and our own way. Lord, this year we will follow the star of Bethlehem, the star of hope, the star of peace, the star of joy, the star of love the star that is you. Let us pray together. Oh God, you once used a star to show to all the world that Jesus is your son. May the light of that star that once guided wise men to honor his birth 
Now guide us to recognize him also, to know you by faith, and to see you in the epiphanies of the daily experiences of our lives. Amen. And now our hymn of praise is Angels from the Realms of Glory. Hymn number 220, verses 1, 3, and 4. 1, 3, and 4. faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We want to share our joys and concerns this morning as we prepare to go before the Father with our praise and prayers. Um, Alice Hilliard would like for me to pass along that she has thoroughly enjoyed all the Christmas cards she received over the holiday season. Uh, Clarence told me that when he went to see her, she had a stack this tall, and her eyesight is, is getting kind of bad, so she asked Clarence to to read the cards to her. And he said he would. And he said, didn't you get some cards earlier? She said, yes, I just want you to read them again, please. <laughs> and so he read them for a second time. But thank you all for the, the cards that uh, we have received. And I, I know that um, uh, many of us have received cards this Christmas, beautiful cards, and we're so thankful for that. Um, Wayne Brand, we're so thankful that you're here this morning. He's uh, had a hard cath at Cone Hospital, was there two or three days, and um, everything checked out okay. For your uh, atrial fib, is that, that's, yeah, for the atrial fib, trying to, to get things under control there. We don't want Wayne to get out of control. So. <laughs> like an old joke I heard one time. They, they called this guy Kudzu because if you keep him controlled, he can benefit mankind. But if he gets out of hand, watch out. <laughs> but we're so thankful that you're here, Wayne, and, and things are going well. Lavetta Bailey has been transferred to Moses Cone Hospital. I want to give you that word. She will have a uh, hard catheterization. Um, is, that what you, is that what you said? Okay. Hard catheterization at Cone Hospital. And so please keep Lavetta in your prayers. 
And of course, again, the uh, family of Elmo Chrisman. Uh, please remember Elmo uh, family uh, in your thoughts and prayers. And, and since we will have, let me give you this word, since we will have um, the, uh, the visitation here tomorrow, if uh, after services you just take a moment to kind of straighten up things in the pew and, and things like that, I think a few of people are going to uh, get the poinsettias up and, and stuff like that. So uh, if you have a moment to stay after worship service and can assist with that, we would appreciate it. My wife's uh, father, my father-in-law, Wayne Barm, is at uh, UNC Rockingham Rehab, room 148, and uh, he has had some blood pressure issues over the last few days that, that have concerned us, and so please keep us in your prayers. We want to pray for Jennifer Edwards uh, with a diagnosis of cervical cancer. Um, we want to pray for uh, Sherry Race, Nikki, Mila- M- Nikki McLam's mother. I'm having trouble talking this morning. Uh, suffered injuries from a fall. I hope she's doing better. Good, good. Um, and uh, happy birthday goes out to Margie Chrisman. And Margie has had, uh, uh, on top of everything else going on in the Chrisman family, she has had kidney stones. <laughs> And she did pass it yesterday. I saw them when we were at the funeral home to, to make plans. And she said that uh, she had passed it and, um, and the pain had lessened. So we're so thankful for that. And Everly May is going to have a birthday Thursday. She will be one year old. Time flies. I tell you, it just goes by so quickly. So uh, happy birthday to Everly. And we know Wayne's got a birthday coming up on uh, the 13th. And also, uh, Addie's got a birthday on that same day. So, happy birthday to you guys. Any other uh, prayer requests or praise reports? Uh, Marty has asked us to uh, put Carol Owen, her sister, in the hospital. Um, she's been in and out of the hospital. Carol Owens. Carol has, has suffered for many years of, from uh, different ailments. And so... Um, she had mentioned that to me. Thank you for that reminder. Please remember Carol Owens. And also, we would like to add Keith Robles, Catherine Lamarcus, and Brown Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. And we also have Keith Robles, Catherine Lamarcus, and Brown Thomas. Thank you for that word. Absolutely. A lot of families are affected uh, uh, with these troops being deployed to the Middle East. And so our, our hearts and prayers go out to them as well. Prayers for Kirsten Davis. Anyone else? Please join me in silent personal prayer, and then we will end with the Lord's Prayer this morning. God, our Father, we rejoice that light has pierced the darkness of our world, that hope has been restored in your Son, Jesus Christ. We gather this morning, and as we do so, we we gather as your children, your brothers, your, your sons and daughters. And being here among our brothers and sisters, we are so thankful that um, you have brought us here so that we can praise your holy name. We have so many things on our mind this morning. both good and bad, but Father, through it all, you were there. You were there to walk with us, to lift our spirits, to give us a good word when we need it. Father, I pray that all of those within my voice have the opportunity to sit and talk with you, that we remember your love for us and that we remain faithful in the good times and bad. Father, we want to pray for this country as we uh, feel tension from across the world, 
as troops are being sent into harm's way, leaving our freedom to go protect it, leaving to go to a place that's uh, uncertain and, and hostile. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit go with them, protect them, and remind them that you are the God of creation and the God of peace. Father, for those families that are um, affected by those being deployed into harm's way, we pray for them, Father, that you will comfort them during this time, that you will give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, we pray for those that are, are suffering across the world. There are so many needs. But, Father, we know that you love your creation. And as the created, we praise your holy name and ask that your name be manifest throughout the world. During this season of Epiphany, Father, may the realization of the one true God and the Christ that came to save us be made known among all peoples. And Father, we pray for the United Methodist Church as we struggle with the issue of, of society and, and Scripture and, and how things should be addressed and, and are addressed. But woven in through all of these discussions, we pray that there is love. The love that has been shown us in our sin when we couldn't save ourselves, the fact that you sent a Savior for us. And so, Father, this day, on this first Sunday of 2020, may we make the commitment to, to stand more faithfully, to be ready to give our testimony to who you are and who Jesus is. May we commit to support our church, to make it a beacon of hope in the community. May we keep a heart for the community and serve as we are called to do. Father, I pray for the families here this morning as we go into a new year. We do so with some with drastic changes, others with high hopes and, and commitments and, and all that goes with life. But through it all, may your Holy Spirit be tangible, be available, be with each and every person when decisions are made and when things are changed and, and when we do rejoice because of the good things and we cry because of the things that have affected us. We pray, Father, that we understand that you are the one true God. You love us beyond measure as shown in your Son, Jesus Christ. And it is your good will that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Just as we have been taught to pray by your Son, Jesus Christ, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen.
children, if you'll join me up front this morning, we'll have our time together. Good morning. Good morning, Addie. Good morning, Andy. Come on, Emma, I want to show you something. Can I show you something? Emma, you want to hold my bowl for me? Mackenzie, you want to hold my bowl for me? Just, just, just hold it right there. How is everyone? Ready to go back to school? Should I ask your parents? <laughs> kind of ready to go back to school? Andy, you're so smart. I'm sure you're ready. Yeah. You've got this. No problem. Today is um, really a Tiffany E. morning. Tiffany, Tiffany can you say that? It means that we suddenly realize something is really great. It means that we're going on something and we can see it better. And so we celebrate light. We celebrate God, but we celebrate the light of God Christ. And so we remember this day when the Magi. But I wanted to talk about light this morning because in the Gospel of Matthew, there's a section where Jesus is, is talking. He's all grown up. But he says, he speaks about life. He's talking to everyone around him, including this word he's talking to us, too. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city on top of a hill can't be hidden. Neither do we light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they put it on top of a lamp. In the same way, let your light shine before people, so they can see the good thing that you do and praise your Father who is in heaven. You are the light of the world. So I brought this little candle this morning. This is one of those. It's a it's a battery operated candle. And if we put that light down, we can, can enjoy it. We can light it. And then we do that. Ah. You can't see the candle. Can you see the light? So, you can see the light. Can you lift up the bowl? I'm going to take this hand. And if we, uh, if we had if we took it, put it up here on the altar table, everybody would be able to do it. Jesus says that he is the light of the world. And what he means is, that we are the ones that need to shine. Now, if we say, I love Jesus, I love going to church, I love thinking about Jesus and talking about Jesus, and about Jesus. I'm not going to tell anybody about Jesus. That light is not seen. Jesus is the light of our scene. Nobody can see the beautiful light that shines. But if we tell our friends, we tell our friends that we see each day about Jesus, our light is shining for all to see. We want Jesus in our heart, but we don't want to keep him there. Once Jesus is in our heart, we want our light to shine throughout the world so people can know who Jesus is, that he's the one that saves us, that Jesus is the one that loves us, that Jesus is the one that came so that we can be with the Father. So we don't want to be like that where you can't see the light. Right, Emma? We don't want to be like that. We want to be like this light on top of the ball, where everybody can see it. And we can tell the world about Jesus and his love. So you are the light of the world. Don't forget that. You want to say a prayer? Let's do prayer hands. We do prayer hands. Dear Jesus, let our light shine. Let us gladly tell others about you and your love. 
and all that you mean to us and to the world. Father, we are so thankful for your love, for your grace. And we are thankful, Father, that these children are here, and I pray a blessing upon them as, as they gather around your altar this morning. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you will do in their life. We pray this, and all God's children said, Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let me turn my little light off. <laughs> I'd like to ask our ushers forward this morning as we take up the morning. Please join me in prayer. God of glorious surprises, like the wise men sent by Herod, we too come as searchers for a glimpse of your presence. As were the people in those days, we are surprised that we find you not in a palace, but in a stable, surrounded by a family of poor refugees and worshipped by the lowly shepherds. Like them, our gifts from our wealth seem simultaneously too material and woefully shabby and outshined by what you have given us. Just the same, use our gifts for the work of justice, mercy, and compassion, as would befit the Savior who sleeps in a manger. It's in his holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, beginning at the first verse of chapter 2, written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said in, Ju in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote, You Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are the least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people. That's from the prophet Micah. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me so that I can go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went and looked. The star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the palace or the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy, then entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to the Lord. And as we sit and listen this morning, let's prepare our hearts to come to table where we will rejoice at the forgiveness that we have found in Jesus Christ, our Savior. So much going on in the world today. It's hard to find time to sit peacefully without worrying about something. But God has called us to a life of peace in Him. 
And so we are reminded of that this morning at the Lord's table. Scripture this morning says, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod. That's the way our reading begins. That's the way chapter 2 begins. After the most significant occurrence in history, after prophecy was fulfilled, after word spread that a king was born that will lead Israel, after the angel's declaration, the shepherd's revelation, Joseph's participation, a star is under observation, a sign the world is watching. There was a lot going on in those days as well. Now, Epiphany is one of the, those three great festivals of the early church. Uh, it was Easter, Pentecost, and Epiphany. Now, you don't hear Christmas mentioned in there. It was a minor celebration until it became so commercial. But those are the three big celebrations of the early church, Christmas being a, just a minor obser- uh, observance in the, the cycle of celebrations. Some traditions celebrated for eight full days after Epiphany. Epiphany Eve, which is today, was known as Twelfth Night, the 12 days of Christmas. It was celebrated on the 5th, and and it launched a a week of celebrating and feasting. More presents and more eating, yay! (laughs) Please note the sarcasm in my voice. The word Epiphany means the light shines forth, or the light is made manifest. Something is illuminated so that we can see it better understand it more clearly. Here's the wonder. Not just that God became flesh in a unique and powerful way, but that it was seen and it could be experienced by everyone. The light is seen. A glimpse of what is possible is given. A vision of the depth of love God has for all creation is revealed after Jesus is born in Bethlehem. After Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Some respond with interest, like the Magi. Some respond with anger, like King Herod. Some respond with wonder, like the shepherds. But there is no doubt that everything has changed, forever transformed, after Jesus is born in Bethlehem. God touched the earth in the humblest way to provide a vivid example of a God that is forever and always present with those in the poorest of circumstances. We cannot miss that that example, a visible example of what God finds most precious, humility. Humility in all circumstances. Mary had an unusual baby shower. For one thing, it was a post-birth baby shower. Usually you have the baby shower before the child is born. That's a a bit unusual. Another unusual thing about this baby shower for Jesus, that men were present. (laughs) That usually doesn't happen. doesn't happen very often, at least. Then there are the gifts that were extremely unusual. Jesus was presented with gifts that must have seemed ridiculous to mom, Mary, and stepdad, Joseph. Think of your home. Right now, think of where you live. Mentally take a a walk through your home, sifting through your possessions, opening closets and cabinets and going through that junk drawer that everybody has. What would do you have that is, is fit for a king? What would you offer to Jesus at this baby shower? What would you bring to his baby shower? What is the most precious, priceless, prominent possession that you can give a king? It was such a humble birth in such a humble place. And and wealthy, educated men bearing expensive gifts came. They presented gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What purpose could these inappropriate gifts serve? Gold is a gift for a king, the most precious of metals. Still sought after today, but what good is it among the animals? A gift of food or shelter or clothes would serve a better purpose. Gold, an expensive gift, fit for a king, and symbolizing for us the belief that Jesus was born a king. And then there's frankincense. What is that? It's a gift that is meant for a priest. It was used for religious rites. It is an aromatic tree resin. 
heated, it releases this strong aroma that can be enjoyed. It probably smelled better than the animals, but it was a costly gift. Frankincense, a gift fit for the high priest, and reminding us that Jesus is the ultimate high priest, the great mediator between God and man. And appropriate gifts of gold, frankincense, and then there was myrrh, what would have seemed the most inappropriate gift by far. It was a gift for the dying, an unusual gift for a child. It's a precious spice or perfume used to anoint a body at death. Myrrh was used as an embalming ointment and incense and funerals and cremations. This was the birth of a baby, not a funeral. Myrrh is a gift fit for the dying, a prophetic gift. Jesus had come with a purpose to give his life for our sins. So he received a gift fit for a king. He received a gift fit for a high priest, and he received a gift fit for the dying. Myrrh, frankincense, and gold. All very inappropriate baby gifts. All of these very inappropriate. But the Magi gave inappropriate gifts to the one who gifts the inappropriate. Let's think about that for just a moment. They give inappropriate gifts to the one who gifts the inappropriate. We are called to remember this time of year the significance and meaning of Jesus' birth, of the manifestation of the divine, of the word becoming flesh. Jesus came to give his life for all. He's he's not just for the wealthy. He's not just for the famous. He's not just for the rulers or the warriors. He is Jesus the Christ, a gift for all that accept him. Jesus gifts the inappropriate with the appropriate gift of eternal life. He gifts the inappropriate with the appropriate gift of eternal life. Just imagine when the Magi arrived at a starlit stable full of animals and peasants. Imagine what was under the star they had followed when they thought of all they had heard and all they had seen. Imagine when they witnessed this tiny baby in the arms of their mother and realized this is the Savior of prophecy. This is the Savior of the world. Then we should ask, how could they not give the most expensive gifts they had and worship this king. But their gifts were inappropriate because all God desires is our heart. That is the gift fit for this king, our heart. In the song, I'll Give Him My Heart, words and music by Carol Joyce Mbala and Emmeline Francois, and is asked, what can you give him? What can you bring? What can you offer that's fit for a king? Bow before Jesus, that's where you can start. What can you give him? Just give him your heart. It's much like the Christina Rossetti poem in the bleak midwinter where she writes, when I, What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring him a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give him my heart. The appropriate gift that Jesus desires, the gift that is fit for this king, is your heart. So as we go into a brand new year, as we prepare to face life's joys and life's challenges, we do so knowing that Jesus goes with us. Where it is safely kept, where it is nurtured, where it is safe, and where it belongs. Let us pray. Father God, we are so thankful for the realization that Jesus is King. And what should we give this king that is born in such humble circumstances? This king that is not born in a palace, but a stable. Not laid in a cradle, but a manger. This king that is wrapped in swaddling clothes and not fine linens. We give him our heart, for that is why he came. So, Father, I pray that We recommit once again to serving more faithfully, to walking more strongly, to bear witness to the love that we have found and the life that has been restored through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. We also prepare our hearts by going to table and being reminded of the sacrifice that Jesus gave that he broke the bread to signify his body, that he raised the cup to signify the cup of the new covenant, 
the blood that will be spilled so that salvation made possible. Christ table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, anointed with your spirit. His food was to do your will and to complete it. He took the common things of daily life, blessed them and broke and shared them so that all were satisfied. He told those who followed him, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. He confronted the powers of greed and evil at the cost of his life. But you triumphed over death and placed him at your right hand to intercede for his disciples until the feast of eternal life. By water and the spirit, he calls us to continue his work until we and all peoples feast at his heavenly banquet. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make for them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. I'll ask Chris if you'll join me. Everyone is welcome to the Lord's table. We invite you to come.
Let us pray. Father God, in your great mercy, you have called us to righteousness. You have showered us with your grace, put forth through your merciful heart. So, Father, we accept the body and the blood. We accept the meaning that they give our lives, that we are forgiven people. And in being forgiven people, we remember where we came from, but we also remember where we go. And through all of life, we have that hope. And so, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to once again come to your table, to feast on the goodness that you have for each of us, your children. And we pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. We end our service this morning singing, so I ask you to please stand as you are able. There's a spirit in the air, hymnal 192, and also the words are being projected. Now go in the peace that Jesus Christ affords us. He died for us. He rose for us. And he calls to us each day to a new life. Now you go with that peace, proclaiming your testimony to the world, shining your light. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>